say to people that I want to eliminate passwords in my research, but then people start uh, nodding. And I don't have to explain to this audience that passwords are impossible to use properly, because uh, security celebrity Miko Hipponen has uh, collected this uh, tweet, which is a cynical caricature, think of something you can't remember, and then don't write it down. So besides their terrible usability, passwords also have very poor security, as many other presentations at this conference amply demonstrate. I, I assembled a team that wrote this uh, Quest paper, a uh, widely cited paper on evaluating alternative systems to passwords. Uh, alternatives such as, for example, biometrics, uh, which are a convenient uh, pin replacement for my smartphone, but they can't be revoked. They can't be used across a network and uh, in an unsupervised fashion, and uh, they are not privacy friendly. What about graphical passwords? Graphical passwords uh, leverage our visual memory, but no memory-based system uh, can ever scale to hundreds of accounts. So if the proponents of any system that is memory-based uh, say that it should only be used for a master password, then and the rest is dealt with some kind of single sign-on system, then they are not solving the problem with a memory technique, but with a single sign-on system. Single sign-on systems are great, uh, but if they are in the cloud, then like the Facebook Connect or stuff that's been mentioned earlier, then goodbye privacy, uh, because the single sign-on operator uh, is necessarily aware of when and to whom you ever authenticate. So uh, a single sign-on system could also be local. If you want both convenience and privacy, you need an SSO that is under your control, like a local password manager, for example. And this is why we developed Pico, which is essentially a password manager or a single sign-on system which lives in your pocket. It's designed to be privacy protecting and better than password in both usability and security. Its central design criteria, you shall not have to remember any secrets in order to authenticate, not even just the master one. So there's a video on our web page uh, from 2013 that some of you may have already seen. In this newer video from 2015, here's our, how our current smartphone-based smartphone prototype of Pico uh, deals when dealing, uh, replacing web passwords.
Now, it's very important that the people, the computer, and the website you're logging into can communicate secure so that the information flowing between them doesn't fall into the wrong hands. There's a process that we call pairing, where you introduce two parties to each other, after which the communication between them can be trusted. Think of the pairing process as arranging a secure channel that only the two of them can use. In people, this is another thing we do using QR codes, but we give them different colors to distinguish them from the real love ones. Pairing the people with a browser on a specific computer is done with a red code. You also need to pair your people with your account on the website. This teaches the people the right credential for that account. This is a bit like the way you set up and memorize the password when you first sign up for the account. We do this with a QR code too, a blue one. <coughs> the red pairing only needs to be done once for each computer you use. The blue pairing once for each website account, as you would have to do with the password. Once you've done your pairing, you don't need to remember or type any more passwords. To log in, just scan the green QR code. But websites will only display a QR code on their login page if they offer native people support. What about all the others? For sites that don't support people yet, we wrote a browser plugin, the Picolens, that allows your people to work with websites that only accept traditional usernames and passwords. When you go to the login page of one of these sites, the lens automatically detects this and shows you a QR code. You scan that and the Pico sends your username and password to the website. However, the Pico can remember lots of different, very complicated passwords for you. So, even this legacy mode of operation can be much more secure than traditional passwords you have to remember yourself. The Pico handles all of this automatically for you. It's like password manager software with the extra benefit that the passwords are not stored on the computer you're using to browse the web. All these credentials are very precious, so of course they should be backed up. You'll be glad to hear that you won't have to do it yourself. He goes back them up for you automatically on a regular basis. However, since these credentials grant full access to your accounts, the network backups must be protected so that only you can do them. That's why when you first set it up, your people creates a strong backup decryption key and saves it on an inexpensive RFID tag, which you can then store in a safe place. If your people is lost or stolen, you can use that tag to restore your credentials onto the new people. In this video, we've said lots of things about how things work, but remember that in everyday life, all of this is hidden and all you need to you simply scan the group your phone and go. That's all. So thank you for this. Uh, with Pico, we wanted to be both more usable and more secure than passwords, and we succeeded compared to remembering and typing the kind of password that uh, Edward Snowden recommended, which is this. Uh, however, uh, the trouble is that passwords that people actually use are 123456, passwords 123456, 8, life hack, URT, ABC123, which are here. Basically, for any technology, you have a slider where you can choose to trade off usability and security. And we want to move to a different technology which is better, both more usable and more secure. So it's further along this way in this uh, chart of usability and security. However, if from here you go all the way with the slider towards security and you have pathetic, uh, so all the way to usability and basically zero security, then uh, although we have made the improvement, we uh, cannot be as usable as something like typing one, two, three, four, five, six. It's harder for any technology to be any more secure than that. So we have encountered a lot of inertia about adopting Pico. 
And why? That's because our prototype, we must admit, doesn't yet solve an actual problem. Because although most of the academic literature uh, deals with web passwords, the truth is that uh, it's not where the pain is anymore. The big websites like Google and Facebook, as we've already said, uh, want you to stay logged in all the time, and therefore they send you a long-lived cookie, and you never have to type a password uh, except for the first time. For other sites, your web browser remembers the password for you automatically, so there's no pain there either, except maybe if you log have to log in from an, a different browser. Uh, and it's true that Pico offers greater security than long-lived cookies or password managers that are in, in the com computer itself, but users don't give a damn about security. So, uh, and also they don't want to have any responsibility for security. They'd rather dump this problem onto someone else. So we can't hope to attract users to Pico for its security features. And Pico will only be a success if it addresses a perceived pain that people have. And web passwords are not where the pain is. So we've also been working on computer login as opposed to merely web login. Because there you can't be rescued by a cookie or password managers before you, you are even inside. And there's undeniable pain, especially if you are in a corporate environment uh, that mandates some screen lock after 10 minutes of inactivity. And Jonathan Millikan from Facebook, uh, is he here in the audience? He's certainly registered. Oh, hi, Jonathan. Uh, when he was uh, my undergraduate student here, did a prototype Unix login. And Graham Jenkins, so my uh, uh, RA here, uh, he's, uh, one of, he's the local organizer of the conference, so he's probably off arranging for launch to happen. Uh, he's been developing this further and integrating it with our continuous authentication facility. And another former Pico team member, Max Spencer, uh, who's over here, uh, developed a Windows prototype, which is shown in the next video. This is still very primitive, mind you, and it requires more mouse clicks than we would actually like, but it demonstrates how you can log into your Windows machine, Windows 8 machine in this case, not a website, without having to remember or type a password. And it also features continuous authentication. So going further, Pico as a user authentication system can be used on more than just websites, can be used on more than just computers. And how can Pico unlock the Internet of Things? Undergraduates Alex Douglas, whom I believe is in the audience over there as well, and Agnes Cameron, whom I don't think is, uh, interned with us last summer to explore this thread. She scans the pairing 
So when you see this information, what does that mean? This is now, provided she is authorized, a quick scan will work out the truth. There are still some aspects of the building that haven't been people in. Watch the same passwords in action. <laughs> Get the support to people who authenticate the user's websites. Meanwhile, in the workshop of the building next door, nobody thought to use people to secure their equipment. Here, as in workshops around the country, anyone who can get into the building also has access to a machine. In some cases, As you go out, ask my other associate, uh, David Llewellyn Jones, who is also in the audience, I believe. Is he? Is he not? Well, maybe he's outside. Uh, he's got a live demo of the board with the little doors that open as you scan the Pico. And depending on your level of authorization, you may or may not be able to open the nuclear reactor door. Uh, David also has another uh, poster. I don't know if he also has a demo up. Uh, one of the reasons why people may not want to abandon passwords even if we provide a newer technology is because a password can be given to someone else even if the rules disallow you from doing that. And a parent may give a pin uh, to their teenager and to tell them to go and buy some groceries. Uh, and if a new and a more secure system 
prevented these kind of misuses that people do find convenient, then it would not actually be welcomed. So we are also exploring ways that we can offer delegation with Pico, and you have different architectural options uh, depending on whether the verifier cooperates on whether you're doing behind his back doing it in a transparent way. The disadvantage of telling someone else your password is of course that it's hard to limit the rights that you are uh, granting to the other person uh, or to revoke them if the delegatee misbehaves. They might even lock you out of your own account. Uh, and with Pico instead we want the parent to be able to delegate use of the bank card for example only for that afternoon or only for a spending limit of 30 pounds and so on and this is what David has been uh, working on. Now uh, in the interest of leaving some time for questions I'm just going to close here. The goal of Pico is to liberate humanity from passwords and there are good usability reasons for doing so. There are good security reasons for doing so. There are good business reasons even uh, in terms of improved satisfaction and productivity of your employees but ultimately for me it's a moral imperative because we computer people have this amazing superpower of being able to define the laws of physics of the digital society. So it's our duty, I believe, to make it fair for everyone else. And with passwords, we've given people an impossible task and then blaming them if they fail to accomplish it, which I think is morally wrong. And I have pledged that Pico will remain patent-free and royalty-free because I want to put no barriers to adoption and have it spread as widely as possible. I think. I thank all the past and present members of my PICO team, staff and students alike who have brought us where we are today. I thank my institution, the University of Cambridge, and the European Research Council who have uh, generously invested in PICO after a very competitive selection process. Thank you very much.